Now we have to trace the development in which the pollen tube reaches the ovule and then the male gamete enters into the embryo sac. That is what is to be studied in this lesson. And what is our topic as it says various ways of entry of pollen tube into the ovule. As you have seen I have not mentioned pollen grain over here because we discussed earlier as well that it is not the pollen grain that makes the passage it is the pollen tube by digesting the style it makes the passage for the pollen uh, grain and in return the male gametes are given into the embryo sac. Now we are going to trace that in little bit detail not completely as much as our syllabus permits us. This is the ovary, over here we are having an ovule supposedly. These are the integuments, anatropous ovule we are having. This would be micropyle, this would be chalaza. Over here you have synergids, okay, and the egg. And here you have antipodals. There lies the central cell with two polar nuclei. The simplest representation and this is what we have to see. Now the pollen grains come and fall on the receptive stigma. As soon as the stigma senses that pollen grains have fallen on it, there are two possibilities that the style that through which the pollen tube is to be formed, it could be hollow or it could be cellular. Okay. If the style is hollow, that means there is canal like system surrounded by intermediate cells which provide the nourishment for the development of pollen tube further and further under the influence of chemicals so that the pollen tube reaches over here that is in the case of hollow style. But in case the style is not hollow, it is having cells present over here. There is no, no hollow chamber that allows the passage of pollen tube easily. At that condition, the pollen tube would, the pollen grain for the formation of pollen tube and pollen tube further would release pectinases. Okay? And all the energy for these two initial processes in the beginning for starting it over here would come from the vegetative cell of the pollen grain. So pollen grain in the beginning would provide the energy. Later on the energy requirement for development of the pollen tube would be taken from the cells of the style itself which would be surrounding that pollen tube. Apart from that many digestive enzymes would be secreted by the pollen tube and in a way pollen would reach near ovary. Okay, This is ovary part. Once it reaches ovary, inside ovary there is an obturator cell which helps in or which assists in movement of the pollen tube to the embryo sac or rather I would say not embryo sac directly to the ovule. Now entering the ovule could take place in three different manners. What are those different ways? The first one is porogamy. Okay. The second one is chalazogamy. And the last one is mesogamy. These are the various methods in which the pollen tube can enter into the ovule. Porogamy is entry through micropyle. The most common one where the pollen tube would enter through micropyle. Chalazogamy, the name is suggesting that the entry would be through chalaza or the chalazal pore which is having antipodals. And the last one is mesogamy, the entry would not be from chalaza or the micropylar end, it would be through integuments of the ovule, that means transverse entry of the pollen tube. Okay? Now these are the three ways in which the ovule 
receives the pollen tube or the pollen tube enters the ovule either through the micropyle or the telazole end or through the integuments the transverse entry of the pollen tube example for porogamy is lily and next few minutes will be dedicated to porogamy only because uh, this is the most common way in which the pollen tube enters the ovule the second one is casuarina otherwise known as common oak and all the cucurbitaceae family has mesogamy method of entry of pollen tube into the ovule once it has reached till the micropylar end we are taking into consideration porogamy once it has what is it over here it is the pollen tube once the pollen tube has reached the micropyle in the porogamous method of entry of pollen tube it comes in contact with the synergids now synergids are otherwise known as help cells these synergids they release a chemical and bring the pollen tube towards themselves when the pollen tube comes and reaches the synergids with the help of filiform apparatus that lies in the synergids now what is filiform finger like okay finger like projections are there inside the synergids with the help of filiform apparatus this these synergids are bursted apart and the pollen grain containing the male gamete reaches over here to make sure that synergids dissolve and the male gamete first one comes in contact with the egg the second male gamete would go to the polar nuclei so this is what all you have to understand in this lesson we had talked about the entry of pollen tube into the female part that is the gynoecium through stigma later on followed by formation of pollen tube within the style then how it enters into the ovary with the help of obturator cell which enables the entry of pollen tube into the ovule in these three methods first one being the most common and we discussed how it comes in contact with the synergids and passes on the male gamete to the egg which is the female gamete waiting for the male gamete so that fertilization's first step that is the vegetate uh, pardon me not the vegetative that is the generative fertilization or the syngamy takes place followed by the vegetative fertilization so this is all about this topic that we have to understand